Hey guys, thanks for joining us to Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're taking a look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Trick Shots. This is a game by Wolf Designer. It is a two to four player game that takes roughly 45 minutes to an hour and a half to play, depending upon the number of periods you've chosen to play, and it is competitive, obviously based on hockey, where each player is going to control a team, trying to score as many goals as they can in your, their opponent's goal. And the player that does this the best and has the most points at the end of the game will be the overall winner. So my opinions on this one, I had a really good time with it and would definitely recommend checking this out. It's been a long time since I've seen a dedicated sports game and not just these fantasy sport kind of montage games that they've, they're have they claiming are sports, but they're kind of different on top of that. So this one is actually based on hockey. And there'll be a number of things that you're going to see within this that are definitely straight from the sport. And they've done a really good job, I feel, that's between that strategy element and the actual game itself. They don't have all the rules in there because it would just bog everything down. And I think it would be too complicated. They have just enough that has a good mix between that strategy and the game itself and trying to make the player make hard decisions. It, it definitely has that push your luck element as each turn during a player's turn, they will perform one action. And then after that action, they can choose to perform another one and they can keep doing this. And each time that they perform an action, they're going to add an additional die to their pool. And as they go on, they're going to continue to push their luck until they decide that they want to stop or certain mechanics will cause them to stop, whether they roll fails or whatnot. And you guys are going to see that in a minute. Now there's a number of different ways to mitigate this or change things up as you're going to have trick shot cards as well that, you'll, that will give your line a special rule that will allow you to do something throughout that line that's out there. And then you also have stamina points where you'll flip over part of your line and you'll get to re-roll your dice. So you'll have some different elements within that as well. And like I said, I think that they have a really good balance. That It's definitely not an easy game to score goals in. So it's definitely going to hold true to the actual sport where you're probably not going to see huge scoring games. So when you score, you're going to be really excited about it because it, it definitely takes some work to get that to that goal line and to get your, your things lined up so that you can make a good shot on goal. So if you like these videos, if you enjoy what I do, please consider that like button, subscribing to my channel, as it really does make a big difference and helps me to continue to grow. And if you want to stay up to date on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's go ahead and head to the table and I'll show you what this one's all about. So before moving into the game itself, the one other thing that I want to mention real quick is that this is just a prototype copy of the game. None of this stuff is the final production stuff that you will receive if you decide to back the game. So first off, obviously, these standees will actually be miniatures, which are looking really cool from the pictures, and I can't wait to get mine. I'd love to paint these up, and I really like the style that they've chosen with these. Each of these guys is kind of like a old-school hockey player, kind of cartoony, where you have the center being your standard size guy. Your wingers are teeny tiny little guys, and your defensemen are these huge, hulking, beefing guys that look like they can bench press a house. And they have their old school gear. These are not brand new hockey players out today with all their state of the art gear and protection and everything else. This is a old school hockey, down and dirty, let's get in there and play. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start the game itself. So at the beginning of each period, it wouldn't start off right unless we had a face off. So our players are going to be facing off to see who can grab the puck. So each one of us will roll four dice and the player that gets the most bounces will be the one that, that wins the face off. So bounces are going to be twos and threes. So we have two there and only one here. So our blue player is going to be the controlling player for this turn. And so he will receive the puck and you can usually just set it next to him if you want to, but I like putting it on the base for now. From there, then we move into the blue player's turn. So during his turn, he can choose to perform one of different five different actions, which is to move, pass, shoot, poke, or hit. And so I'm going to take you through each one of these so you can kind of get an idea of how the different actions can be performed. So let's go ahead and start with a move action. So we're going to choose one of our players that we'd like to move. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this defenseman back here. From there, then we're going to gather up our dice pool. And with this being our first action, we're only going to roll one die. And as long as we do not roll a failure, which is a one, and these dice are going to be customized. As you guys can see here in this image, these are just a prototype dice again, just to stand in and I'll be using symbols for them. But as you guys can see here, there's going to be a custom set of molded dice that will have all the symbols on them that you need. So let's go ahead and roll and see what happens. All right, so we passed. We did not roll a one, which is a failure. So then our player can move in any direction he wants to, both orthogonally or diagonally. 
only in only one direction. You can't change directions up to a number of spaces, and each one of the characters has their own set of stats. So as you guys can see here, the center is kind of a jack of all trades with a size of two, which means that he can hit anybody that is lower in size than him, and a speed of three, so he's pretty quick. He can move to three spaces. Then we have the wingers, which are small in size. They only have a size of one, so they're not gonna be able to hit anybody, but they're very fast with a speed of three. And then we have the defensemen, which are kind of slow with a speed of two, but they have the biggest hit, uh, biggest size, so they're gonna be able to hit anybody else besides other defensemen at three. So with our defenseman, he can move two spaces in any direction. So we could choose to move him over here for a say, or we could move him back one space if we wanted to. Totally up to us. So let's go ahead and move him back here to get ready for a potential pass from our center here. So from there, then it would go, our, that is our action we've completed. And so at this point, then we can choose. We can either choose to take another action or we can choose to make a line change. And so we're gonna go ahead and perform another action. So at this point then, we're gonna go ahead and do a pass action back to our defenseman here from our center. As the center cannot move because he is orthogonally adjacent to an opponent, so he is considered to be checked. And he's only going to be checked since he has the puck. And none of the other opponents can check the other players. So he's going to go and choose the pass to our defenseman here. And so now, since we are doing another action, we'll add another die to our pool. And this is going to continue each time we perform an action during this turn. So this is the push your luck element. As the more actions you perform, the more dice you have to throw and the higher the chance of failure. So we're going to go ahead and, and do our roll, and we passed. We have a success and a reaction, so our player is going to pass the puck, and you can pass any number of spaces in either a diagonal or orthogonal line, as long as it does not pass any other players, opponent players, or your own players. So, and then since we rolled a reaction, anytime we roll a reaction, our opponent can move one of their players one space in an orthogonal direction. So our defenseman over here is gonna move back one space. Then again, like I said, we can choose to stop there or we can push our luck and do another action. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll add another dice to our pool and then we'll choose another action to perform. Let's go ahead and do another move action. So we're gonna go ahead and roll. And again, we got lucky, no, no failures, so we can perform our move action. So let's go ahead and move our, let's go ahead and move our, def let's go ahead and wave or move our winger up here, two spaces. From there again, we can choose what we want to do. So let's go ahead and do another move action. So we'll go ahead and do this. All right, so we did roll one failure, and so we have a choice. We can choose to spend a stamina to reroll all of the the dice except for successes. So since our two we have two successes, we don't have to reroll two dice. Or we can accept the results, which with this it would end our turn, but we'd be able to complete our move action. So let's go ahead and spend that stamina and see if we can get that result. All right, so we are good. We'll able, we're able to move one, two, three. And then again, we can choose whether or not we want to continue. So we could risk it and do a, a, a long pass and see if we can potentially get a, our player set up for a good maneuver, or we can stop there. So we have two stamina left. Let's go ahead and push our luck. We'll go ahead and do that pass and see what we get here. So we only had one fail and three successes. So let's go ahead and spend that, that stamina and see if we get a, luck, a better result. We did, we are completely successful, so that pass will go through and we'll make it to our center, and then we can choose what to do from there. So we're getting pretty high up there, so let's go ahead and do one more move and see if we can get that puck over to our opponent's zone with a move action. And we got it, we have no failures and one reaction so our opponents will get to react to it but let's go ahead and do our move so one two three and our where our opponents are going to go ahead and move that goalie over so that our player cannot score take a shot on goal all right so at this point our opponents our player has pushed his luck pretty far so we're going to go ahead and stop and change the line so we get to flip our stamina back over and then we would move into our opponent's turn. We'll move the timer track down and our opponent would take his turn. 
So I went ahead and moved around a couple of the red players to show you guys some more action. So our blue player is in the offensive zone for his team trying to score that goal, and the red team needs to get that puck out of there. So we have a couple of different options. If we have a red player that is orthogonally adjacent to our blue player, we can attempt to poke him and try to poke the puck away and take control of it. Or if we have a, a player that is bigger in size, we can choose to try to hit him. Now this is a risky business as a hit if you roll one or or more fail results that is going to result in a penalty and that'll end the red team's turn so it's it's definitely a gamble but sometimes it'll be worth it especially early in the turn where you're only rolling so many dice now the other thing to keep in mind with with the hits is that you cannot choose to spend stamina to re-roll those actions so you have to be very careful with it so let's go ahead and start as this is our first action let's go ahead and perform a hit with our defensive men here so we're going to go ahead and roll that die and see if we can do it and we're good. We rolled a three, so we're good there. So we can move up to our movement value. And as long as we move into a space with an opponent, we're going to be able to hit them. So we'll move them one space in that direction, continuing on. And then if they were the puck carrier, then we gain control of the puck. From there, then we can continue on with our turn. So let's go ahead and perform a move action with one of our other players. And we successfully moved, so we're going to go ahead and move him here. And then let's go ahead and perform a pass action and see if we can get that puck out of the way. So we successfully pass on that. And so we will go ahead and pass our puck up to our opponent. And then he can continue on with his turn. And since uh, this guy is the one that's considered the action, we can go ahead and perform an action with that one right away. So let's go ahead and do another move action and see if we can get a little bit further along. And we pass, so, or we, we successfully do that, so we get to move up to three spaces. And then we can do a move reaction to that. So let's go ahead and move our defensive guy back one space. All right, so at this point, we do not have a clear shot on goal because we have to be either orthogonal to the goal or diagonal to that section. So in order to shoot here, we would have to be into this space here. So at this point, we have to make another choice. We can move over if we want to to try to gain a clear shot on goal. And we're starting to run high on the turn on the number of actions we can perform. All right, so at this point, our player is going to go ahead and stop and change lines. So again, we get to flip over our stamina and our turn will end. We'll move that marker over and it would go back to the blue player's turn. So then it's going to continue going back and forth between the blue player and red player where they're going to continue to try to score those goals on net. Some of the really interesting strategy elements to that is trying to line everything up. As you guys can see, like I said, you can only make straight true diagonal or true orthogonal shots on goal or passing. So it's definitely interesting and very strategic figuring out where to move players, how to activate players. As each player, you can only activate them one time in a row. You can't activate a player two times in a row. So you have to continually plan and strategize how you're going to move your players around to optimize those actions and to be able to try to, to generate those, those shots on that goal to, to score or to set up those passes or whatnot to get that puck out of there. Well, I hope you guys found that video helpful in deciding whether or not you want to back this game. Like I said, I would definitely recommend it. I had a really good time with it. I definitely think there's a great mix between strategy and realism within this one where they're capturing the essence and spirit of the hockey game. And like I said, in the video itself, I was able to show you guys some of the basics, but there is but there is some advanced things you can include later on once you get the basics down as well. One of them are these trick shot cards, which are going to take effect during line changes. And each one of these cards is different, and there's a whole slew of them that you'll get with the game. And each one of them changes a little bit based on what you've selected. And you can do a draft with this, uh, where you can do uh, very specific things, or choose cards, or randomly deal them out, however you want to do that and then during a player's turn whenever they make a line change they're going to bring in one of these cards that will stay in effect until they do another line change each one of these is different for example you have one that uh, failed pass or shots do not end your turn you get to ignore one failed result when shooting uh, change the direction once when moving, move one space before hitting, and each one of them like I said is very different and plays different so it adds another layer to the game itself 
And like I said, this is a great mix between push your luck and strategy as you really do have to make those hard decisions on, on how to move, how, how many actions you perform during your turn, do you spend those stamina to, to re-roll, and all these different decisions, whether to hit or to try to poke, you know, all kinds of different things that really make you have to think about what you're doing. And like I said, especially having those those different directions and only being able to do things in, in orthogonal and diagonal directions of, of the true direction really adds a lot of strategy to it because you really have to do and figure out how to, to move your team around. So you make those, those opportunities for you to, to try to take those shots or to make those passes to get that puck away from your opponent. So of course, these are just my opinions. I'd love to hear you guys in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think of this one, if this is one you're looking to back. And if so, what would you like to see in this one? Is there things that you'd like to see added? Uh, I, for example, made a suggestion to the creators that I'm an old school guy. I used to play Genesis back in the day. And I remember the mutant hockey game where you got to play all kinds of different fantasy teams, but you were actually playing the sport of hockey. And I thought that'd be kind of neat to see some of those type of things come into this potentially down the road, depending upon how well they do or if they do expansion or whatnot this might be something that'd be interesting if that's something that they want to go with but like I said let me know in those comments below what you guys would like to see you know what would you be interested in backing or uh, having as additions or different things as well let me know if you guys want tournaments or organized play or all these different kind of things in those comments below or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and let them know as well I'm sure they would love to hear from you guys any suggestions or comments you guys have as well so as always, if you enjoy these videos, if you like what I do, please consider that like button as it really does make a big difference and subscribe as it helps me to continue to grow and bring these games to you guys. And if you want to stay up to date on all my videos, also ring that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. As always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leaving feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and I try to take into account everything you guys say to make the best possible videos. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.